Hello, my Wealthy Wife tribe and friends. How are you doing? I am Miss Sophia here at Wealthy Wife, and I want to take the time out to say thank you for joining me. I truly do appreciate you being here, and I hope you are having an incredible day wherever you may be on our gorgeous and amazing planet. Now, what I'm going to be doing for these next couple of audios is I'm going to be sharing with you guys, I'm working on a new introduction for Wealthy Wife. Because at times I realize I really do keep needing to hone in and remind everyone what exactly I do do here at Wealthy Wife because I have heard some crazy stuff. I'll say it again. Wealthy Wife has nothing to do with leveling up. Leveling up is a concept that mm -mm, it's not enough. It'll get you to a certain point, but I teach lifestyle over here. It is the entirety of your being, your essence, your purpose, your desires. That is more than leveling up, my darlings, okay? So I'm going to be sharing with you guys, like I said, I'm playing with some introductions. So you're going to be the first ones to hear them. And then I will, you know, find decide which one sounds the best. So God, daughters, you know, you're listening. Let me know. Feedback is always welcome because I, you know, I once again do enjoy. And also, you know, my subscribers, you guys are also welcome to email me after you've heard the two or three that I'm going to share with you, which one you like the best. Okay. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> so here we go. First one. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Miss Sophia. I am the visionary founder of Wealthy Wife, a one-of-a-kind platform dedicated to empowering women to live lives of luxurious elegance, opulent femininity, and rich, fulfilling relationships. As an affluent, rich, and wealthy romance and lifestyle consultant, as well as specialist, I specialize in helping women elevate every aspect of their being, emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually so they can confidently attract affluent, rich, and wealthy men while embodying their most authentic and magnetic selves. At Wealthy Wife, we believe femininity is a superpower, and I am passionate about teaching women how to harness it to create exceptional results in their personal and romantic lives. My programs and services are designed for women who desire more confidence, love, prosperity, and joy. I assist women and help women to rediscover the art of seduction, master the science of attraction, and refine the skills needed to navigate elite social circles with grace and sophistication. My ideal client is a dynamic woman who is intelligent, charismatic, and more, between the ages of 25 to 70 who aspires to live an exceptional and exquisite life filled with beauty, charm, and purpose. She is ready to leave behind societal limitations and step boldly into her role as an iconic and irresistible woman. She desires to be adored, celebrated, and cherished by high caliber men while thriving in an environment that matches her elevated standards and aspirations. Through our signature offerings here at Wealthy Wife, such as the Paramore Bible and the Strategic Hypergamy Blueprint, as well as my elite level coaching experiences, I guide women on a journey to become the ultimate muses. Women who inspire, captivate, and create legacies of love and abundance. Now, what sets Wealthy Wife apart as a com is our commitment to cultivating a woman's whole being. My clients don't just learn how to attract the right man. They transform into women who magnetize opportunities, wealth, and admiration while creating opulent lives on their own terms. I am thrilled to share this with you. And who knows, I have an opportunity to share it with you personally now or in the future. So that is the first introduction. I say this once more, wealthy wife. My goal is to help you create your life. Once again, not just get you A to B with some simple results, which will hear me. Step by step is important. I'm saying nothing derogatory against level up or whatever these communities are. You know, they work for their communities. 
And I'm all for whatever works for individuals. But I am your whole lifestyle, not just bits and pieces of you. In Wealthy Wife, we work on cultivating you as an entire woman. As I've said before, I work with holy women. My goddaughters work on becoming their personal best in their entirety. They're not just looking to attract a man. Once again, I guess because they're tired of adulting. They're not just looking to do things just because. No, they are becoming. There's a huge difference. And they get to decide. That's the one thing I think I really love so much of what I do. Because I said before, especially with these new signature programs and systems that, I have, that I'm introducing you guys to. As I mentioned, we have two live masterclass starting in January. And one of them is the Elite Paramour. And remember, the Paramour means, Paramour, the word Paramour literally means lover. The lover. And so for us here at Wealthy Wife, the pair more literally is a lover. She's a lover of life, life experiences, men, opportunities. She picks and she chooses. And because she takes the time out to learn self and really decide what it is she desires to do, because here's the one thing I notice, and I'll say this again, ladies and gentlemen, I have been working and consulting and counseling with women for literally 25 years, ish, a little more than 25 years. I understand what makes us tick. I have been in the presence of men. Men have been part of my life literally since I was born. Men have always been a very valuable and important part of my life. And I have the privilege of getting insider information about them from all levels, from ordinary to, oh my God, exceptional. From, you know, regular income, so to speak, the average income, into the space of truly wealthy billionaires, darlings, multi, multiple multi-billionaires in every category in between. That has been accessible to me, one, because of who I am, who I have cult cultivated myself to be. If any of you think that you're going to be able to step into the space of true affluent riches and wealth, and you haven't taken the time out to work on your personal development, meaning your self-confidence, how you carry yourself, your, your, your presence, that personal brand I've been discussing these past couple of days, and you're going to really thrive and be really successful in that energy, you are sadly mistaken. It requires a certain mindset. And I understand the population, for the most part, they're not interested in that, that level of being. I understand that. It's not a problem. There's a place for everybody. I only ask when I share the information with you is that you, yes, you, beautiful, lovely you, are doing what feels right and good for you. Because if you're living a life and you're unhappy, and there's a crap load of unhappy people out there, all trying to smile and act like life is wonderful and great, and behind the scenes, it's a, it's a mess. But if you're truly happy in your space, I've said this before, I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for Do you, boo? If it makes you happy, I applaud you in that space. But most people are unhappy, and they're unhappy, but they're not unhappy enough to do what they need to do to cure their issues. You know, for the most part, people are lazy. I'm, yeah, I'm saying it because it's the truth. Most people are just lazy. They don't want to learn. They don't want to invest money in, you know, into education, elevation. They're not looking to do, you know, what, it, what it's going to take. They don't want to read books. They don't want to do anything. And this, unfortunately, is most of the population. But they love to complain. This isn't fair. This shouldn't be this way. Well, I hate to break it to people. This world is, this world is, the, where we live is a school. And the reason that you're here for the most part is to evolve. Now, what the evolution, evolution, evolution looks like to you, that's for you to take the time out to look inside and see what it means. And once again, there's no one size fits all. Like I said, some people, as myself, we aspire to, we have very high aspirations and we're willing to do the work to, to obtain what we desire. You know, what I have coming up for 2025, for me personally, is, oh my gosh, every time I sit and think about it, because the goddaughters are learning this, and the goddaughters, once again, that are working with me, that will definitely be in the master classes, will, we will go deeper into it, is setting yourself up to thrive. Setting yourself up to have an amazing year. No different than being a business, because here's the kicker, you are a business. Yes, you, you individual, you, whether you're not saying like, you know, you're going to go to the state and get no, you, you as an existing being, basically our business. And every, what do you think people do New Year's resolutions? That all these hopes and dreams and lies that I'm going to do better next year. Well, why not start now? Because you have to set the foundation now.
And then the beginning of the year, because I'm in a cold climate this time of year, where I have opportunity to set myself up to do even bigger, better, and more when I finally get to a space where the weather's warm. So we start setting our social calendars, sit down and put together like a business plan, kind of like a business plan that you do for a business, but this is your life plan. What would you like to do in the next 12 months? What would you desire to do in the next three years? What would you want to do in the next five years? I mean, there are people I know that work on 50-year plans. This is one of the reasons why the Rockefeller was so successful, has been, the family's been so successful. Their founder, John D. Rockefeller, he had like a 100-year plan for his family. Now, I'll be honest, like wrapping my head around 100 years, that's a bit much for me. I'm not quite ready for that. You know, five years, 10 years out, perhaps. But you know, you we, we like working out. We build the muscles to make it bigger, better, and more. But you have to start someplace. So for those of you that are going to be joining me for the master classes, I'm thrilled. I really am. Because these are things we're going to be working on. So you will have a taste of what it feels like to really make a put together a plan. To put together your personal blueprint. And then watch your results happen. And then if it doesn't happen exactly the way you desire, we refine it. That's the beautiful thing about evolution. It's flexible. Some things you get right, some things you don't. And I know some people are terrified of failing because we've been taught to fear failure. But we've also been taught to fear success. Isn't that crazy? People tell you, you know, you don't want to do that. Well, you know, you know, last time you tried, you it didn't go well. Well, yeah, learning lesson. Well, you know, when, you know, Becky Sue did it and, you know, you know, and, and you know, Tyrone did it or whatever, whomever did it, it, it didn't work out for them. Or when, you know, when John did it, it didn't work out. Well, that was for John Tyrone and for Becky Sue. That has nothing to do with me. And you guys have to be very conscious of that because some folks have a habit of taking to other people's failures. Ain't why? It has nothing to do with you. And if that person never got back up and tried again, it still has nothing to do with you. That was their personal choice. You have to understand that your life is your choice. This whole thing now with the new year happening, new year, new you. I said before, in the weight loss industry, we used to love this time of year. Love this time of year because everyone's out there. I'm going to lose 50 pounds. I'm going to exercise. I'm changing how I eat. There are all these wonderful things that people know darn well. They have no, no true intention of fulfilling. But it sounds good because the collective is saying it. See, what you can understand is playing with the collective keeps you stuck. Look around you. There are some things the collective is good for, absolutely. But when it comes to you understanding your desires, Wealthy Wife 3, who are you? What do you desire in your wise? That's personal. That's personal. And this is, like I said, where we focus in at in Wealthy Wife. What do you desire? My darlings, what do you desire? Who are you? I mean, when you really, really, really get away from other people and their opinions and the noise of the world and social media and your family and your religious organizations, your spiritual organizations, when you finally get away from all that outside noise and basically noise pollution, what are you thinking about? You know, when you listen to my videos, because once again, my space is after rich and wealthy living in romance. This is my space. So you listen to me for a variety of reasons. And I love getting feedback because I do. And I have a chance to speak to different women when I'm, because, you know, if I'm doing interviews for private tutoring or if I'm, you know, the comments that will come in through YouTube, because I get people email me. I see the comments that are actually uh, put into the, underneath the, um, the videos. It's again, working with goddaughters, whether that's through, you know, our group stuff or for the private tutoring. I love hearing you. What's on your mind? Why do why are you here? My messaging is not like anybody else's messaging because it wouldn't be like anybody else's message. It's my message. This is my mission. This is my ministry. It is not going to sound like anybody else's because there's no way, there's no way it could. I speak from my heart. I speak from my truth. I speak from my experience. And I share the information I share with you for a reason. I'm very purposeful when I speak. I know sometimes you guys think I'm not. Because you don't think that you get enough. Listen to the different videos. I share tons of information on how to put yourself in front of opportunities. I do. Go through the playlists. If you want to shortcut yourself or take the time out and peruse the different audios. And some videos. I think I have a handful of videos still left. Actual videos still left on here. I'm here to give you, to, to encourage you to look beyond the mundane. I'm here to encourage you 
to really start thinking about what you desire in your eyes. I'll say this once more. Uh, do I give you guys five steps to you know to how to do whatever? No. If you're looking for that stuff, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, there are plenty of audios out there, videos out there that teach us stuff. I teach you. When I come on here and share, I'm having a conversation with you for the most part. Yes, I can be very specific at times when I choose to be. But for the most part, I'm coming on to have a conversation. I'm coming on to share information with you. I'm here to help change and help adjust and elevate your mindset. Have you literally thinking introspection is one of my specialties i'm sure my long-term subscribers here on the youtube channel know and god knows the goddaughters know i'm always making you go inside yourself go within go within go within because i could give you a b c d e f g instruction on things but if you're not prepped to receive it it's not valuable to you and that's once again that's not nothing i can do about that that's between you and you but when you're ready When you're when it, something finally clicks and you're ready, oh my gosh, then you become a vessel to receive the information and we can go deeper in your studies. Why do you desire affluent, rich, and wealthy? If you're somebody who has this vision that you're married to a rich, an affluent, rich, or wealthy man, rather that's that high earner, rather that's that, um, and once again, high earner doesn't necessarily mean a rich man. It just means a man making a ton of money. There's a different mindset that happens when someone decides to become rich and there's a different mindset when someone decides to build wealth because wealth is legacy. This is my space, my dears. I am fully embodied and embrace what I share with you. I have been studying this stuff for decades. I have been exposed to this stuff for decades. I live inside the space that I teach. And I'm happy now because as I'm planning, because once again, I said before, I'm planning for my next 12 months. And then I'm thinking in terms of the next five years out as well. I'm working on my five-year plan as well. And I'm thinking in terms of people I'm going to be meeting. Next 2025, oh my gosh, the opportunities that I have, I'm setting in, in place for myself, which will also benefit the goddaughters and will benefit some of you here on the um, YouTube channel because I'll be sharing some experiences on YouTube channel. But you really not going to embody it fully unless you're inside the world of wealthy wife, because in those spaces, there, there are certain things you're going to just receive that you don't receive unless you're inside of the world of wealthy wife. There are certain things I have to cultivate in you first. And the first layer is, who are you? Like I said, once again, it's one of the reasons why I love this other master class, which is a bonus class, and it's a standalone class as well, the personal branding one. Most of you don't know who you are. And once again, there's no criticism because that's just, that's a normal thing because you're not taught to learn who you are. You were taught to be something for everybody else and basically ignore who you are because, well, you being you is going to disrupt somebody else's system because they're using you. They're using your energy. They're using you. And it can be somebody that's not doing that. You, you, you feel it's not, they're not, their intention isn't to harm you, but it does harm you because anytime somebody takes you or you allow someone, because it's not they're doing it, you're allowing it, you allow somebody to squash your dreams. Oh, I don't know why you want to do that. Ugh, really? Wow. Really? It's what, why do you want, why even do that? Ew. Or you put it out there, you're hopeful, you put it out in social media. Woo, social media is, can crush an unprepared person. Read the comments. I'll give you an example. I was on my YouTube page, my Instagram pages, and there's a young lady. She is going through, she has, okay, she's beautiful, beautiful young melanated woman. She owns her own farm. She has like 87 acres of land someplace down south. And she was just bebopping. One of her reels is her just bebopping through her land. And she shared, she has fruit trees and nut trees and this and that, you know, berries are growing. And she's just happy. She's and she's so beautiful and she's happy and she's sharing what she's gotten. You know, she's all this, you know, she has this abundance around her. And she was saying how, you know, come visit me because, you know, she's opening up her farm to teach people do different things. And, you know, she was just saying the abundance that she has in her land. And then you go into the comments and there is some woman just you know those people those nasty mean nice nice nasty people you know they 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 compliment you but at the same time they're punching you in your throat you we know the ones and i hope you're not one of them i truly don't because that's just such a nasty nasty way to be as a person oh, i'm going to compliment you but at the same time i'm tearing you down 
So the woman's basic compliment was this, you know, oh, you know, I hope you're not one of those people that is yes, out here, we have this, you know, these people in these food deserts and they don't have enough food. And I, I hope you're not one of these people that's out here flaunting your, your abundance and blah, just nasty comment. It really was. It really was. And, you know, I, I get just, oh, those people are just so, just, they're, they're, they're horrible. And I mean, she literally is coming at this woman. And the woman just said, you know what? I have all this abundance. Please come help pick some, because it's not, she can't eat all of it. Most of the stuff's going to fall off the trees, go back into Mother Earth and nourish the soil, which is great. That's the beautiful thing about, you know, nature. She gives us what we need, and then she also knows how to take care of herself. But, you know, and the, I don't even think the young lady saw the comedy initially. I think when she finally went back to read comments, and because other people were defending her, because they were like going after this woman, rightfully so. They're like, what is wrong with you? You know, here she is sharing, you know, her experience and sharing, you know, her, just she has 87 acres and she's a young melanated woman doing this on her own. She doesn't have, you know, a husband, so to speak. She doesn't have, she is doing this on her own. She brings in people as needed, but she is making this happen on her own. She says that her goal is to change the face of farming so that other women like her understand this possible. So she's a very positive platform. So people were coming after this woman, this nice, nasty woman, going, what is wrong with you? You know, seriously, what, what is wrong with you? She did, she's not bragging. She's simply sharing her her truth. And she also said, hey, come and get some of this because I, I got plenty. So I'm sharing this because, and then she finally did catch it because she I guess she finally read the comments. She was like, she goes, wait a minute. She asked the woman, she goes, are, she goes, are you coming for me? Cause she was like surprised. She's like, I didn't say anything. She goes, I just said, come get stuff. I have plenty to offer and share. She goes, matter of fact, if you know anybody, if you live around here, you know people that need extra food or need whatever the food base. She goes, by all means, come bring people, come get stuff. But she, the young lady was just so stunned. She's like, what'd I do? And then the woman came back with another nasty comment. Oh, that's how you, that's what you took out of my message. Yeah, we all took it out of your message. We basically said that you were coming for this young lady. Because you're just a mean, nasty person, basically. So why am I sharing this? Because social media, if you're in, once again, you have to understand how to hold your ground. So another reason why I love what I do, because my goddaughters learn how to stand very confidently under space. Sometimes it happens quicker for others than it does for some, but it's okay. Because what I notice, because I've been doing this for so long, they eventually get there. Those who are committed to their journey. They get there. And when they finally land on their square, so to speak, when they finally own who they are, oh my goodness. I, I, oh my, I wish more of you actually were inside. I mean, I have a, have a wonderful, 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 wonderful group of women inside a wealthy wife. <sighs> I do wish more of you were there. Because to watch that, because some of them have actually grown together because they kind of came into the space together. So they're each watching each other come into their own. They're thriving in space they thought they never could. They're doing their heart's desire. They're building out their businesses. They're learning how to interact better with men. Because I said before, we love men over here. We love love men over here. We love relation, being in relationships with men over here. But we do it when we're ready. And we understand who it is that we're inviting into our world. The Jimmy said it again. We love them. But we're going to work on self first. So understanding that when the time comes, you invite that man, that masculine energy into your world, or men. Because once again, it's not just about a man. It's about learning how to be with men in a variety of places, professionally, personally, you know, romantically. Because all of those require different aspects of you. But they know who they desire to be around them. They understand who to invite in. And they also understand who to, who, to, who to release and let go. And they also are energetically setting themselves up that the ones that really don't belong in their space just don't even know they exist. Because that's how it's supposed to be. If someone is, is no way an energetic match for you, they won't know you exist. When I go on here and literally see all these complaints about men and relationships and this sucks and this is hard, I'm looking around going, what? And I mean that sin sincerely because I'm thinking, you got some, I got some people make it so hard. And I know it's not. And I, and I know for a fact there's nothing hard 
about it. Relationships take work. Absolutely. Can they be challenging? Mm -hmm. They can be. But it becomes less of an issue when you understand who you are what you desire and your wise. And that way you ask better questions and you are unafraid to sit down and have conversations. Most people get into sucky relationships because they do not have, there's no conversation. I don't want to use do not because you don't hear the not. Yeah, that's like a scientific thing. They figured that out in some scientific study, research study years ago. If you say, add the word not behind something, no one hears the not. So I'm going to say most people, it's an issue because there's no communication. Women are worried that if, I, oh, if I'm really honest and I'm really truthful about what I desire, he may not like it. Well, he's not your person. Let him go. Or what, what if I do it? He he's not your person. If someone's not lining up with, with, with your ideologies, your, your, your desires, not your person. Now, here's a kicker. Now, you have all these grand desires and you think you deserve something, but you're not prepped for it. So it's not going to come to you either. You may get it and you're not going to keep it. You must be an energetic match for what you're asking for. It need not be a perfect match initially, but you have to be on path to, you know, hold, be able to hold that vibration. So that's why I always say, I work with my goddaughters in their entirety, emotional, mental, physical, spiritual. They become the total packages. And for those of you that are listening, it may not be a wealth of goddaughter just yet, but you've been listening for a while and you're thriving. You get it. I love when I hear back from women. I get emails about this and I hear about this when I'm actually doing my own, my private tuning one-on-one -on -one interviews. And I heard about it also with women actually work with me inside a wealthy wife. There are some who literally binge watch the videos. I've had women email me and say, you know what? You are who I listen to as I drive to work. You're who I'm listening to when I'm leaving work. I, will, I sat here and binge watched your videos all weekend. That is such a compliment. And that touches me so deeply in such a space of absolute gratitude. Because the know that the information I share has this level of impact. And I've heard this from many women. To know that my messaging is being heard and it's being embraced and it's being embodied. My ultimate goal is that we have thriving and successful women first wealthy women whatever that means to you and like i said i'll be going through some of the nuts and bolts of it next year probably toward the end, probably by the end of next year but like next fall i have some new classes coming out but not introducing them just yet then embracing the ability to date whomever they decide be that affluent rich or wealthy being able to invite that energy and those kind of men into the world for complementary and harmonious relationships, not just about I gotta get the money, I gotta get the bag. No. We want it all. So we want the whole experience. We're not just looking for just the money. Money is important. I said before, money is fabulous. But I need to make sure that I actually want to have that kind of exchange with somebody. I'm not gonna just do this just because I'm chasing after that money. Money's here. I'm not worried about that. And then deciding, you know, what level of relationship they desire. Do they desire, you must again, to be that pair of more where she enjoys a company of either a man or, or multiple men. And now once again, when I say multiple men, it may be multiple lovers. It just might be multiple men in reference to friendships and relationships. Now I'll say this again. You don't have to have sex with men all the time. I still get that always surprised me too. Well, what if you must have sex with me? Well, if you don't want to have sex, I'm tell them no. I've shared with you guys in different audios what I say when I'm dating. Out the gate, I let men know. We're not, there is no sex right now. I don't know you. Are you kidding me? I have zero knowledge about who you are. I don't know what you're bringing to into my world energetically. I don't know who you are physically. Do you think I'm going to let you tie into my body? Are you nuts? Let me explain the level that I, t I do for care of my body. I'm starting out my year next year, 2026. I'm starting out with, well, I'm doing starting it now. You know, a whole detox and cleanse. I do cleanses. I do detoxes. I eat. <laughs> Working on approving it. My diet is a clean diet for the most part. So I'm very conscious of how I prep and care for my physicality. I'm very much aware of how I take care of my mental and emotional state of being. I'm a very spiritual woman. So there's not. I'm not doing things haphazardly to take care of me. So why am I going to haphazardly let some man into my body? You, that's, and I'm being my personal opinion. That's gross. My opinion. I'm taking my time. 
And any man who's unwilling to wait for that, that's fine. I don't care. I'm being honest, ladies. I don't care. He's not my person. Because they do wait. I know that for a fact. They wait. And in the meantime, I tell them, if you have to have sex, I mean, because I'm dating multiple people. And I, I've asked, because men don't ask. You've heard this question on dates. Why well, are you dating other people? Of course I am. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's a weird question. I'll say that. I go, that's an odd or weird question. Of course I am. Aren't you? And some women are scared to ask that question because he might say yes. Well, what are you expecting? To find your husband on your first date? You might doubt it. It's highly unlikely. And even if you did, you still need time to get to know him. So that's what I'm saying. We empower over here. My goddaughters understand how to just take their foot off the gas pedal, step back for a split second, and take a deep breath. Value you first. Because when you understand how to value yourself, then you can express how to value other people. Excuse me, how other people value you. You are the one who sets the stage for how people treat you. No one else does it for you. You're the one. I know some people like that's a harsh, harsh truth or not, it's the truth. People treat you based upon how you allow them to treat you. And if you desire better treatment, then become a better version of you. You owe that to yourself. No one else. You owe that to you first. So as I mentioned, you know, I guess I work with these dynamic women. I'm offering the signature programs now, literally are the Elite Paramore which is through the Paramore Bible and strategic hypergamy. Because when my goddaughters decide they're ready to get married, then we have to shift the energy to start thinking about long-term relationship as in husband and wife. It is different than with somebody is who is a lover or um, there's just different energy. Depending on, because a paramour, once again, she can be many things. Because a paramour, I kind of model after. There's some, she's kind of, she's part courtesan. She's part priestess. She's 1,000% muse. And those skill sets you learn as that paramour will definitely benefit you as a wife. Remember, affluent, rich, and wealthy wife. They will benefit you because you understand how to socialize. You understand how to communicate. You understand who you are and how you show up in the world. So once again, when you finally decide that you're now ready to be part of a couple, a legacy couple. As I told you, we don't do power couples over here. We do legacy. There's a difference. You are now setting yourself up to pay attention to the type of man who's going, a man is going to come into your world and you guys speak a similar language. It need not be identical, but it has to vibe. These are things I teach over here, Wealthy Wife. Because I'm not just here to teach you how to just get married. Oh my God. So much more. And especially if you've never been in a sustainable long-term relationship. That's what makes me laugh. How are you going to be in a marriage and you can't hold a just a basic romantic relationship? And you think marriage is going to work for you when you have no communication skills. You have zero understanding of how men think and what who men are. You have z barely an understanding and knowledge of who you are. But marriage is going to fix the problems for you. <laughs> Good luck with it. It's not how it works. Marriage is something that you should be thinking about very, very concise you need to understand your what's and your why's ideally because once again marriage was supposed to be a lifetime event and i believe in this a sacred covenant between you and your person to create this life now and those conversations will happen those, conversa those conversations must be a part of your relationship because you need to be conscious and aware of who you are and what you're thinking, your desires, and also understand his to make sure that as you guys are growing together over the years, that you're still in alignment, that you still are in harmony. And if the times come, because times will come when you're going to fall out of alignment. It's just a natural state of growing and being. Those conversations are even more important because now you can sit down and go, whoa, wait a minute. I just noticed something. It's like, what, babe? We seem to be a little off right now. Um, you feel it? He's like, oh God, yeah. So glad you mentioned it. Okay, well, let's sit down and let's let's go first. Go eat because you know we we want a full belly. You know, get some food, come and a glass of wine. You know, feel comfy, and let's come back and have a discussion on this. Because our marriage or our relationship matters to me. What about you? He's like, of course. 
and then you can sit down and have a conversation. No accusing, no yelling and screaming, no craziness, but have a conversation because you. this is the kind of flow and energy you have between you and your person. He knows he can come to you and, and bring up ideas, things that, you know, are greater things that he's thinking, nah, babe, something's kind of off. I, you know, we need mm, something going on. So let's have a, let's have a sit down. And it, you're not freaking out and panicking. Oh, my God. No. And you can go to him because this is your person and you understand him and you're, you're vibing. Babe, once again, something sudden doesn't feel right. I don't know what's going on. You know, can we, can we sit down and kind of hash this out and figure it out? And because there's that emotional intelligence between you, because you understand how to be present with each other, the conversation, while it may not be an easy conversation, because sometimes they're not, sometimes there's things that you're doing. I've been a member. I've done long-term relationships. My longest one was 10 years. Sometimes it was me. And there was something that was going and on in my brain. I'm going, okay, I need to really probably put this in front of him because I don't know what he's thinking, what he wants, what he desires. I should probably sit down and have a conversation with him to gain clarity. And I would. And vice versa. I would tell him, hey, if I'm missing the mark on something, please let me know. I go, don't sit there and harbor. Because that's a woman thing, which I can't stand about us, just so you know. Women will harbor and harbor and harbor and sit on stuff and fester and fester and fester. And then this is major, this crazy explosion. Like, where is this coming from? And I've dealt with this in a relationship before. I had a, a guy that I dated. For years, we my, my, my seven-year relationship, he would do this. And it would blow my mind because, once again, he was raised by his mother. And he didn't have, like, and this makes a difference. That's why men, are, men whether you're a single, if you're a single mom, this is important. Your sons need male role models. Good, healthy, positive male role models. Because as a woman, we cannot teach a man how to be a man. We do not have that capacity. We are women. There's, there's nothing in us that makes us a man. And I made sure that my sons had those examples to the best of my ability. So he did not find those kind of examples till he got like to high school because he was like a phenomenal football player. So he eventually had coaches and would come in and help him. But up until that point, he was raised by a single mom. And she was highly emotional. This one was, anyway, I want to discuss his mom. May she rest in peace. Uh, but she was something special. I'm going to leave it at that. And so he was highly emotional. And he would harbor stuff. Very masculine man. I'm going to say this right now. He was very much a man. Very, very much a man. Very masculine man. Very much the protector provider. He, he was. He, we had a great relationship for the most part. But I didn't realize that trait about him. To one day we got into a, we got into this crazy argument, and I'm like, and I was thinking, because he said something to me, and I went, that is not even on topic. So I had to stop and go, what are you talking about? Because he said, well, you said so and so and such and such. I'm like. Because I'm having a discussion about something recent, and I'm thinking, I know for a fact that this is, has nothing to do with what I just said. And I had to stop. I go, what are you talking about? I go, when did I say ABC? And he went back like four years before, and a conversation that we had had on a topic. I literally had to go into my brain file and go... And I stopped talking and I listened to him because you you have to be present with the person, especially when they're just flipping out sometimes. And I stood there and when I finally found the file in my brain, I was like, no, I go, you almost got it right. He goes, what? I go, I didn't say it. I go, I go, you, 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 you flipped my words. You, you did something with my wording in your memory. That's not what I, because I know how I speak. I'm very much aware of how, how I use words. I go, what I actually said was, you know, D-E-F. And he went, oh, because then he remembered. He goes, oh my gosh, you did say DEF. And he said, I'm sorry. I was like, not a problem. I go, but he, here, I go do this for me. He goes, what? I go, let's not do this again. I go, if you have an issue with something I'm saying, and there's a reason I'm sharing it with you guys, because once again, this is about relationship building. If you have an issue with something I'm saying, stop me. Repeat what you thought you heard me say. And allow me to say, yes, you heard me correctly. Or allow me to say, no, babe, that wasn't what I said. What I actually said was this. See, that's the level of maturity, emotional intelligence that we need to have successful relationships. This is why we work on the paramour first. Because you're learning your communication skills. You're learning how to flirt. You're learning art of seduction. You're learning the art of listening. You're learning who you are. 
So that the time comes, you want to switch to high strategic hypergamy and start building out for marriage or long term, whatever marriage looks like for you in a relationship. You have the skill sets to do it. Have you noticed that your life requires skill sets? And not just for your jobs, my dears. People spend more time, you know, fine tuning skills for work. They'll get an extra degree or two or five or they'll go get certifications. But rarely, and I do mean rarely, do people really invest in how to hone and elevate and develop their them personally. Oh, I get, it's just, you know, I'll work it out. No, you can't do that. Relationships, especially our, rela our personal relationships, our interactions with people, men and women, because you also want to learn how to build out friendships and relationships with women, especially in the space of affluent, rich, and wealthy, depending on what it is you desire to do and how you desire to show up in this space. Oh, there's so much I could teach you guys, trust. But right now, I just hone in on who you are, because without the who, who are you, it is not the easiest to teach the rest because you're going to keep flip-flopping and flip-flopping and flip-flopping or giving up. So the foundation has to be you. So anyway, what do you think about the introduction? And I hope you guys stay long enough to listen because I know some of you will listen to the whole audio. Take some notes. I always tell you guys take notes because sometimes people think I don't talk about anything. It's because I'm not taking notes. When you sit down, take the notes, guess what you discover? I cover quite a bit. That'll give you a chance to sit down and think about how is your life progressing? Where do you need to make some adjustments? Where do you need to invest in yourself? Anyway, have an awesome day and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.